John Busby with the Culture Buzz. Uh, if you hear the humor in my voice, it's because one of my favorite columnists in the world is joining me this time around. Uh, we're going to be talking about the new issue of the Iowa History Journal. And uh, one of the mainstays, in fact, I keep having people tell me all the time, Arvid, that uh, once they get their new issue of the Iowa History Journal, of course, that's those wise people who subscribe. So it's delivered directly in their mailboxes. They said, I've got to check out Arvid Huseman's country roads column to see what it says this time because uh, it just whisks them to memories reminiscence but uh, stories that maybe their uh, parents or grandparents told them as well uh, and it's always a fun thing to talk about we'll talk about some of the other things in the new issue of iowa history journal too uh, it, by the way folks um, it's available in countless places go to iowahistoryjournal.com to find out what good vendors do sell iowa history journal um, and as I hinted at earlier, uh, you should do what Arvid and I do, and that is get our uh, issues sent directly to us as subscribers. So that is what you need to do. Arvid, uh, you have been riding Country Roads since, uh, well, since they invented Country Roads. So, uh, But uh, I, I think people love the fact that you just simply spin these these wonderful uh, weavings of reminiscence that just carries us back to memories that, like I said, uh, we've either experienced ourselves or we've heard from our parents, our grandparents, maybe our grand great grandparents. Um, you know, I, I don't think I've ever asked you this before, and we've had you on several times here, but um, when did the idea of, you know, capturing these columns uh, come about? And by the way, folks, Arvid has a book that it's a collection of a lot of these stories. So I just dropped a subtle little hint there. But tell us about those origin days when that muse of yours inside you has been gathering all these stories said, hey, Arvid, we need to start writing columns about this stuff. Well, actually, it goes back to 1988. I had just become the publisher of the Creston News Advertiser in southwest Iowa. And from the time I got into the newspaper business in 1973, I had wanted to write a weekly column. I, I was sports editor at the Webster City Daily Freeman Journal back in the early 70s. And my problem was I was kind of afraid somebody might disagree with me in a disagreeable fashion. And by 1988, I'd been around long enough to not give a hoot if somebody disagreed with me. Um, <laughs> you know, thick, thick skin. And so when I became publisher in Creston in early 88, I decided to start writing a weekly column. And I have been doing that ever since, except for a six-year hiatus from 2000 to early 2006, when I was the executive director of the Iowa Newspaper Foundation, and all of the newspapers in Iowa were member newspapers, and I didn't want to publish a column in just one of them, <laughs> so I dropped out for six years. And then in uh, 07, uh, when I uh, got back into the newspaper business, actual newspaper management, I started in again and uh, picked up a few other papers around the state, and I have been doing it ever since. So 30, what? Uh, 36 30 years. years. 36 years, yeah. I love it. So they... When uh, when Mike Chapman. Yes, uh, the founder of the Iowa History Journal. The founder. Mike was the publisher in Newton. Yep. I was the publisher in Creston. And uh, we would ride together from Newton to Dixon, Illinois, where our, our company's headquarters was. And we'd you know, you'd get three and a half hours to talk about everything. <laughs> and he kept telling me about this, this new publication, which sounded like a good idea. And then he, he and I um, had breakfast here in Des Moines one day, and I gave him a copy of my uh, first book. And he only knew me as, as a publisher. He didn't know that I'd actually begun on the new side of the business. He said, I didn't know you could write. And he said, I'll tell you what, let's, let's put one of your columns in the magazine every month. And so we've been doing that since about 2008 or nine. I think 2008 is when it started. Yep. 
I, and, and the fun thing is, um, I started uh, sharing about Iowa History Journal with Mike Chapman, and of course that carried over to the new owner and publisher, Michael Swanger, and there are some traditions that are always good to carry on, and I have to believe that you have been inundated with the same kind of comments people had with Mike Chapman and Michael Swanger as how can there be enough stories about Iowa history to keep the magazine going? And in your case, how can there be enough stories to tell about, you know, just observations out there on the country roads, which, of course, is the name of the column, folks? Yeah, well, there, there's some stories I can't tell until somebody dies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wishing that on anybody. There are just some stories that um, propriety would dictate that I don't tell. But... I have a good memory. I can think. I can think back to when I was three years old. So there's a lot of stuff that piles up. You know, when you don't, when you don't use your brain for anything else, it'll hold a lot of old memories. Uh, <laughs> so there's. Uh, I, I will admit that since I retired ten years ago, it's a little more difficult to come up with a topic. I, I write a weekly column for several newspapers. And it's, it is a little difficult sometimes to come up with fresh topics every week. Uh, with the History Journal being, you know, bi-monthly, um, six times a year is a little easier. Yeah, we'll say six times a year. Yeah. I always get confused. Bi-monthly, bi-annual, and all that other stuff. So I, I, I don't do so bi monthly would bi -weekly. be twice a month. Yeah, so bi-monthly, I think, is every other month. Yeah. Anyway, folks, you have to look at this. Come on, spring is the name of the new issues, uh, Iowa History Journal issues uh, version of Country Roads. And it, it's about an Iowa native deals with a growing loathing for winter. And what does he do? He finds a picture in his own archives of this little fourth birthday Arvid Huseman standing out without a coat in January, up when he was living in the Iowa-Minnesota state line area. Uh, you don't have that uh, kind of uh, ruggedness anymore, do you, Arvid? I don't like winter. <laughs> this winter's been pretty good, to be honest. Yep. But, um, it, it, and the thing is, I, don't, I also don't really like to think about going south. I know a lot of people go south, and, and that's cool, or that's warm, I guess. <laughs> but um, I, I'm content to stay here. You know, Julie's two kids live within a four-hour drive. My, I have a son in Ankeny, a daughter in Minneapolis. We are located right between them all. And I don't want to live hours away from the grandkids, like 20 hours away from my grandkids. Um, so we, we enjoy living in central Iowa. I just wish that winter was a little kinder here. Well, uh, we, we deal with what we deal with, and um, uh, this is why they have soup and cozy indoor fires sometimes. Arvid Huseman is my guest. He is the uh, wonderful, witty, memor memorable pen behind Country Roads, the regular column that appears in Iowa History Journal. You can get your copy of Iowa History Journal at many places. Go to iowahistoryjournal.com to find out where those places are. Um, the other thing you can do, of course, is be wise like Arvid and I, be a subscriber so it just simply gets shipped to you before those other places that sell it even have it. So it saves you an awful lot right there. Uh, it's a great deal cost-wise for six issues a year. Uh, i got to tell you about some of the other good things that are happening in this current issue of Iowa History Journal. There is a great story, a cover story, Heroes Among Heroes, the Iowans in the Battle of Shiloh. We're turning the time hands back to the Civil War era, and there is a striking painting on the cover that's created by North Carolina historical artist Dan Nance, and it captures the essence of the savage fight fighting. Uh, there is just a lot of great stuff in here. Exploring history, well, guess what? The renovated, reopened State Historical Building of Iowa is captured in a great story by Jeff Morgan. Um, the Iowans uh, who fought gallantly in the Battle of Shiloh, like I said, is there. Don Doxey is a guest here on the show every so often. He wrote another great story. Michael Swanger, well, i got to admit, he has a love for baseball and, and history. So what does he do? He talks about Bob Feller's opening day no-hitter in 1940. What a great thing. 
And then uh, there's this great story about an ISU couple who wrote farm and home advice stories. Uh, this was during the Depression, and uh, it is this is packed with great stuff. There are, there's additional things in here. You don't want to miss a, a single moment of your Iowa History Journal. Uh, the, the fun thing is, is these are always conversation stimulators. Um, uh, and if you have young ones, uh, kids, grandkids, great-grandkids, that you want to kind of get interested in the storytelling aspect of history, because that's really what it is about, Iowa History Journal is a great way to do that. Um, and, and it gets those kind of cross-generational conversations going. Speaking of cross-generational, I have to believe that a lot of people uh, just... Uh, contact you every so often and say, you know, I, I appreciate you remind me about this because that also triggered my own memories, which I shared with my grandchildren, and they really thought it was neat, and then they told them about you, and so I read that to them. And, and uh, you kind of become an instigator in helping people kind of maybe start journaling or capturing their own stories, don't you? I, I wish that people would understand the value of sharing your memories, particularly in writing. Every, a lot of people feel, well, I, I'm not a, a writer. You know what? If my grandpa had written several stories about him grow, himself growing up, I wouldn't care if the grammar was correct. And I don't think anybody else does. I would just love those stories. Back about 30-some years ago, I put together um, kind of a genealogical book for my mother's family. Mom was one of 12 kids, grew up during the Depression, lost a brother during World War II. And I got a hold of each of her siblings, and we got, um, in addition to listings of all the descendants and their addresses and their families, I asked each of my uncles and aunts to write a memory of growing up during the Depression, during World War II. I had an uncle, uh, Uncle Stauffer was a great guy. He said, well, I'll write it, but you've got to put the dots in. <laughs> you know, understanding, he probably had at the max an eighth grade education, and in his, in his family, the kids were taken out of school early to go work for area farmers. Yeah. He did not have the opportunity to learn <laughs> where to put the dots he wrote a fascinating story of growing up, and I put the dots in for him. I did a little copy editing, and I, I just, I, I produced it on a copier, and uh, folded an eight, eleven by seventeen into a, you know, a booklet. It was a fun job, but I really enjoyed hearing or reading my uncles and aunts' stories. Yeah, um, we can do that for our kids. Um, my brother-in-law, who passed away 20 years ago, uh, was, was also my cousin. I'm from a small town. <laughs> People, <laughs> family trees don't always fork. Um, <laughs> and uh, so my brother-in-law and I, we both had good memories. We knew a lot of the same people. And when we got together, we'd talk about old times. And one of our nephews told me once, he said, you know, used to we'd get together for Thanksgiving and you and Laverne would tell stories, and I remember being a little kid, I'd lay on the floor and listen to your stories. Not every kid, but a lot of kids enjoy hearing about their hometowns and what it was like so many years ago. And I always enjoyed that, too. So tell the stories. Tell your kids and your grandkids uh, about growing up and experiences that you had. Amen to that. Uh, Arvid Huseman's words of wisdom. Uh, if you need a little stimulus, just read his column each uh, issue of Iowa History Journal. Country Roads is what it's called. If you do a little further digging, you can do some Googling Arvid Huseman, H-U-I-S-M-A-N, and you'll probably find a way to uh, where his book is somewhere. I don't know. 
but you'll find a lot of it out there. But uh, get get inspired to make sure you capture your own. And as he so eloquently shared with you folks out there, it really doesn't matter if the grammar's right, the, the dots are in there, or if there's some creative spelling going on. The important thing, what really, really will stand the test of time, is the shared story that's being passed down from one generation to another, and that is so important. Iowa History Journal, you will be amazed at what you learn, what you discover. It is history storytelling at its finest. Get your uh, copy now, get subscribed right away, and uh, you'll end up being like a lot of other people. Well, I better turn to see what Arvid has to say this issue. Arvid, thank you so much for your time. It's always a pleasure to visit with you. Thank you, John. I appreciate the opportunity.